Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The finished form of tray is tried in the patient's mouth before the rubber base impression is taken. You'll note that the periphery extends down slightly farther on the bridge side than the opposing side. The margins should be smooth, and if they are rough, they should be polished and smoothened. The tray extends down on the bridge side on the lingual and is slightly shorter on the opposing side of the arch on the lingual surface. The red dots denote the stops for the non-supporting cusps. This is important to have a stable seating. The formatory extends down into the edentulous area to allow an even thickness of rubber when the impression is taken, and a handle has been attached for easy handling. Adhesive has been applied to the tray, and you will note it goes beyond the periphery. Light-bodied rubber base is strapped into the syringe until it is full. This then is quickly handed to the operator and is injected around the entire cervical periphery, taking care not to incorporate any bubbles. This then is also injected in the grooves going from the cervical to the occlusal. This is important because this method will eliminate any entrapment of air bubbles. Then the entire preparation is covered with the light body rubber base material. The bicuspid then is injected starting from the distal, the distal box, then around the lingual cervical into the mesial box area where the rubber is injected until it flows out of the buccal and lingual then across the isthmus and the entire preparation is covered. Heavy body is very carefully loaded into the tray, taking care not to entrap any air. Any remaining light body material can be placed on the heavy body in the tray. This should be placed over the area where the abutment teeth are. This then is seated down to the stops that we have fabricated into the tray and allowed to set for 10 minutes. In a laboratory situation, this may take slightly longer. When the rubber has completely set, then it is removed from the patient model and the tooth may come out. These plastic teeth fit rather loosely. If they should come out, remove it from the rubber carefully and place it back in the model. Then examine the rubber base impression for details. You should have secured the entire cervical and all the details of the preparation. The model should be lubricated very carefully with Durlay lubricant. This is important because this patient model is plastic and the Durlay will adhere if there is not sufficient lubricant down into the details of the preparation, the grooves, the entire cervical, and even the plastic ridge. When this has been sufficiently lubricated, then small increments of Durlay, liquid on the brush and a small increment of powder, are placed on the occlusal toward the distal, and we are going to prepare the distal half of this Durlay coping, very carefully teasing the Durlay into the groove, keeping it away from the cervical. You'll note that we have added pink base plate wax around the cervical to keep the Durlay from running down the junction of the plastic root. We very carefully tease this. If you have the Durlay too wet, it will run everywhere. So make sure that it has the consistency that you see on your screen. When this has started to set and becomes rubbery or doughy, we very carefully lift it off the abutment tooth, 
and then re-lubricate the plastic. This is important because we don't want the Duralay to stick to the plastic. And then we reseat the distal half of the coping. When this has completely hardened, then we will fabricate the anterior portion of the coping. Increments are added on the occlusal surface, and they are teased down the mesial groove and the rest of the mesial surface. When it has reached this doughy stage, then we'll again very carefully tease this up and down and up and down until it comes off, trying not to distort it. Once we've removed it and it comes off, we'll very quickly relubricate the tooth and place the coping back in position again. You can use your spatula to readapt any margins that may have been bent out. A fresh supply of a durable lubricant, and then the coping is placed back, and we should check to see if it does not rotate, and it should not rock on the tooth. It should be very stable. The distal half of the bicuspid has already been fabricated. This is removed, and the bicuspid is re-lubricated with Duralay lubricant, and this portion is placed back. The stability is checked to see if it is stable. And then the mesial portion of this coping is fabricated. It's very important on the mesial surface that we do not lock durably under the marginal ridge of the first bicuspid. So you'll note that we are shy of that surface. The Duralay is added, and then when it reaches its rubbery consistency, then it is removed, relubricated, and then reseated until it sets up. The coping should be shy of occlusion, and we will check them with shim stock. Should they be in contact, then a greenstone should be used to relieve the coping so that there is a space between the copings and the maxillary teeth. The maxillary teeth also should be lubricated with Duralay lubricant. This is not necessary with a real patient because the natural enamel and saliva act as a lubricant. Small amounts of Duralay are again added to the areas where the lingual cusp would make contact with the coping, both on the bicuspid and the molar. These little cones are approximated, and then the articulator is very carefully closed to see if we have the amounts of Duralay in the proper position. When the Duralay then loses its gloss, then the patient can close on this, giving us an indentation of the lingual cusp on our Duralay coping. Thank you. And the patient will close and record an impression of the opposing lingual cusp. When the Duralay has set up, then we will recheck with shim stock. We should get contact not only on the copings, but on the adjacent teeth and on the teeth on the opposing side of the arch. Should this not be true, then the Duralay coping should be reground and prepared again. You will note that there is a slight dimple where the opposing lingual cusp has contacted the coping. Should this have too much flash, the excess Duralay should be removed. Any excess rubber around the root surface is removed with scissors. In this typodont situation, a flash of rubber around the root can occur, as you see here. And this could bend over and distort your dye. A flap like this can be removed with a forceps, as you see here. 
pins are placed in the area where the dowel pins are to be eventually placed. The bubbleizer is used to paint the details of the impression. This acts as a surface tension reducing agent. This is carefully painted on the occlusal surfaces. And then great care must be taken to blow any remaining debubbleizer out of the impression because this can affect the surface of the stone die. The dowel pin is positioned in the areas opposing the impression. And we should make a mental note of where the dowel will be placed. A mix of stone is made, velmic stone, mixed so that it is not too thin. It should be a rather thick mix that will hold and support the dowel pin. The stone is very carefully vibrated into the details of the impression, taking care not to trap bubbles. A spatula can be used to trace out the details of the preparation. Any bubbles that may be trapped down in the portion of the preparation will flow up the number seven wax spatula. Dowel pins in are aligned. If the stone has a proper mix, the dowel pin will not sink into the stone, but will remain where it is positioned. Then it is not necessary to sticky wax the dowel to the pin. A soupy, sloppy mix will require a sticky wax attachment to hold it in place. The dowels are further aligned, and then pieces of paper clip that are bent with orthodontic pliers are placed in the edentulous ridge area and on the opposing portion of the arch to hold this velmix to the base of the model that will eventually be fabricated. This then is allowed to harden sufficiently. When it has completely hardened, then V grooves are placed at the base of the dowel pins. These act as additional resistance to rotation and make a very stable die. You'll note here we have a definite V groove on the mesial, distal, buccal, and lingual of the molar abutment tooth. Supercep separating medium is applied to the undersurface of the dies. This is applied in the areas where we would like the die to be removable. We carefully paint this in the areas where the die will be separated, keeping it off of the rest of the stone. The impression has been boxed with boxing wax. Two balls of utility wax are placed on the end of the dowel pins, allowing sufficient length for the embedding in stone. The lingual area has been built up to allow room for sawing. The model has been poured up and soaked in water. The soaking in water allows the separation of the rubber impression from the stone base. A lab knife is used to very carefully release the heels of the impression from the stone, and then the handle of the tray is used to pull the rubber from the stone. The occlusal details are carefully examined, and the abutment teeth are examined for lack of bubbles and sharpness of detail. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use.
please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.